64 to 47 over Sam. Overall, as the Lumberjacks will win the opening tip. And let's see if the Lumberjacks can score off of the opening possession. Trying to get the ball to Calcaris. Diego Willis getting the start tonight for the Lumberjacks. Good ball movement here, but now five on the shot clock. And Willis is off the mark. Good rebound fought for, and it will stay in favor of the Lumberjacks. Beautiful job right there by the Lumberjacks, able to get that offensive rebound back. But that was some nice defensive rotation by the Bearcats in their first defensive set of the game. And going back to kind of the history of these two teams, the very first matchup as we see Kinsmill taking it strong to the hole. The very first matchup came in 1973. And the Lumberjacks will get it right back. Calvin Solomon is fired up. Just being a disruption in the backcourt as a great job by the defensive juggernaut, Calvin Solomon. Possession arrow right back with the Lumberjacks. And the Lumberjacks will try to take an early two possession lead. Cackleries fires from downtown, but they'll get the extra possession. Jocelle from way downtown, and he connects on his first shot of the game. And that's what you like to see from Latrell Jocelle, who can get it hot from behind the arc. And Giselle is a 35% three-point shooter. So that's a great shot to see his first one go down here for the Lumberjacks as they do take that two-position lead. And now let's see if the Bearcats can get an answer back. A good, strong take. Good defense. And the Lumberjacks come up with it. Trying to push it in transition. Inside Kinsmill, good defense by the Bearcats, and they'll get it right back. That was a beautiful job in transition by the Lumberjacks, getting back fast, trying to get a quick bucket up. But even better defense by the Bearcats, able to poke that one off of the leg of Kinsmill. So if you don't know already, in for the game for the Lumberjacks, Cackleries, Willis, Solomon, Jossell, and Kinsmill. And then in for the Bearcats, we have number one, Savion Flagg, number 13, Jaden Ray, number thir three, Demarcus Lampley, Javion May, and Tristan Ipe. Five to two, Lumberjacks on top here in the early going. Cackeries will get a second shot to go down from behind the arc. Misfired on the first, but shooters shoot, and he knocks down the second. Back-to-back -back possessions now for the Lumberjacks with big-time three-point shots. And on the defensive end, they've done a great job limiting Sam one to three so far in this game. Trying to get going from outside the arc are the Bearcats, and they cannot do so. And Kinsmill with the big time. So now Tizano in the game for the Lumberjacks, giving Willis the seat. Good strong take, and it's going to be a travel. The Lumberjacks getting it done on both ends of the floor. Three scores on the game already for the Lumberjacks. Kinsmill with four, and then Cackleries and Jossell with a shot from downtown. And you love to see those balls go down early for Jossell and Cackleries, those three-point shots. Because we're going to see a lot of those this afternoon. And Kinsmill gets blocked down low. They're going to make it a point of emphasis to go against Kinsmill as we see him working hard on the defensive end, and it will be a foul against the Bearcats. 
should mention Chase into the game for Lumberjacks. Tezano had a hot streak lately for the Lumberjacks and great to see him on the court early in this one as he has become a serious factor on both ends of the court for the Lumberjacks. But going back to Kevin Kinsmill, the leading scorer for the Lumberjacks, he averages about 16 a game. And I guarantee you the Bearcats are going to make it an emphasis to not allow him to get anything easy on the inside. Yeah, Kinsmill sitting at fifth place and points per game in the WAC conference. So, of course, he is going to be a point of emphasis for Sam to stop as we see him try to take to stop it because this crowd momentum is big for SFA right now. And in this possession coming out of the timeout for the Bearcats, you got her trying to find a way to get the ball to your most dominant playmaker, and that's Savion Flag. Averaging 19 points a game, as you see Solomon cutting them off. Almo comes up with the steal there. But they've so far forced Flag to have the ball out of his hands. You got to think that's an advantage for the Lumberjacks. And what a completely different start to this game. It is from their previous matchup. In their last matchup, the Lumberjacks scored 12 points in the first half, and now they have 10 points here, and not even five minutes are gone. A very low-scoring game that first, first time these two met up. And still trying to get it going on the Bearcats, and they cannot do so. You can see the Lumberjacks trying to play some fast-paced basketball. Jackson Posey. And another offensive board, and the Lumberjacks will go on top to 13 to two. David Cackleries, two shots from behind the arc. And how about Tezano causing that play to happen with the beautiful tip out, goes right to Cackleries. Cackleries, the shooter that he is, is able to knock it down. It was a beautiful offensive set right there by the Lumberjacks. And still misfiring of the Bearcats. Six points for Cackleries now. Sam Houston right now can't seem to buy a bucket. And Solomon left wide open. That's right within the top of the key and knocks it down. With the slow motion jump shot right there. But beautiful rotation on the ball. And they have now climbed this lead up to 13 points. And the Lumberjack bench getting into it. Getting into this game and it will be a foul against Tizano. Bearcats looking for any answer they can right now. Shooting one for five from the field, and now they get their bucket they were desperately needing. Coming from Savion Flag too. If you want to get back into this game real quick, you have to get the ball into your hands of your playmaker, and he's able to make something shake right there on that position. Solomon trying to go to work down low, and ends up throwing it away. Good, strong take, just couldn't finish. And Tizano able to come up with it. Just following the play right there by one is Kinsman with the beautiful Euro. And it's a point. Kinsman. Beautiful Euro step. Able to avoid the contact, the potential charge. And able to lay it up and in. Lumberjacks on top, 17 to four. And a nice pull-up jumper there by Javon Grant. Right there, Javon Grant just checking into the game. He's able to get his first shot up and good. That was a beautiful mid-range pull-up right there. 17-6, Cackle Reese feeling it. And that one will go out of bounds. We mentioned to Doe Chase that shooters are going to shoot. So not a bad shot by Calcaries right there, just, a, a, just little bit a little of a, off. A little bit of a heat check there for Calcaries as we see Jocelle and Dede Hall checking the game, giving Solomon and Jackson Posey a break. And Calcaries is a 43% shooter from the field, so he's he is an efficient scorer of the basketball. Grant trying to take it all the way inside, and Hitting the deck hard was Tristan Ipe, but he looks like he's okay. Ipe just showing a little bit of extra effort going up after that rebound. Glad to see he's okay. But Javon Grant getting to the rim that time, 
forcing Kinsmill to foul him. So going to the line is Grant. He's going to the line. He'll have two shots coming up. First shot is good. Grant is a 62% free throw shooter on the season. And he actually averages more than the team. The team is about a 59% free throw shooting team. So not the best from the line. But he is already over his season average. He averages two points a game, and he's sitting at four now. 18 to seven. Bearcats trying to crawl back in this one already. And if you're Coach Hooten, you're telling your guys to settle down. This crowd is heavy in here in the sawmills. Jocelle for three, and he gets it to fall. Well, Jocelle, that was the exact same spot as the first three-pointer he shot, and it's good to see him having confidence in his shot and knocking him down. It is, and that wasn't bad defense by Sam Houston, just a better shot by Jocelle. Good pump fake, and the ball will rattle in. As Dante Powers able to get that one to fall, but they're going to have to respond with the bucket, with a bucket, if you're the Bearcats, because you don't want Lumberjack stretching this lead. Ten point game again. Jackson Posey from downtown, a little off the mark. Bearcats trying to close it within single digits. Good ball movement. Tough shot there by Flag, but with the follow is Javion May. Javion May, right place, right time. Great finish right there by 11. As we see Flag trying to introduce himself to this offense, but that just a little bit too far on that shot. So back to an eight point ball game. Good ball movement, but now under 10 on the shot clock. Ball is tipped, Hall is able to come up with it. And Tizano was trying to rise up for that one, but good defense from the Bearcats. The Bearcats saying no way. And comes up with Right now the hot hand rides with Latro Giselle. Last time these two teams met, he was held to three points, one for seven from the field. So great to see him two for two from the line tonight. And let's see what he can do to bring the Lumberjacks to a win. Right now, the Bearcats have their 7-2 center in right now. Kuba Karwowski going against Kinsmill. He's going to make entry passes down to that paint. Very difficult for Lumberjacks, so you have to find another source of scoring. This Posey pulls up and knocks it down. And you were talking about another source of scoring. There it is. And even if Kinsmill gets the ball on the inside, it's not going to be an easy task to be able to get it over the hands of the 7-2 center. Not only that, but they do flock to Kinsmill in the paint, trying to stop him from getting those easy buckets. As you see Lumberjacks able to come up with the possession there off the Bearcat turnover. So it is back to a double digit lead for the Lumberjacks, 22 to 12. And it is Lumberjacks possession. See the pass there. Great hands by Solomon on the defensive end. Seen that a couple of times so far tonight from Solomon able to be a disruption on the defensive end and come up with the turnover for the Bearcats. And a little entry pass is off the mark, and the Bearcats will get it right back. And Flag just being an instinctive player right there for the Bearcats. So far, quiet on offense, second in the WAC conference in scoring. But they are good ball movement, and they are still scoreless from behind the arc. Good ball movement around the perimeter. Jocel seeing what he can get on the inside. And they're going to say Jackson Posey stepped out of bounds. Hey. Said it, Chase. The Bearcats were making life difficult, making it hard for the Lumberjacks even to cross the three-point line. It leads to a turnover. And now Cackle Rees will check into the game, giving Jackson Posey a rest. The Lumberjacks have held strong to this double-digit lead. 10 minutes here into this first half. And good quickness, able to tip it out to his teammate. And still nothing for the Bearcats 
Behind the arc, inside Hall. Great find by Cackle Reeves. Cackle Reeves with a full court vision there to find Hall. And those are two points that you love to get if you're Coach Keller in this offense. A quick rebound by Solomon leads to the kick out to Calcaris, and Calcaris with that vision that he has is going to lead it to two points. As that shot is off the mark from flag, Jocel fires from downtown. He's got it to go. The ball. He's got two points. Yeah, and they've made other people try to get to the bucket. So far, it's working for the Lumberjacks with the 15 point lead. I will say the ball movement is there for the Bearcats. Just not able to get much going or much on the inside at all. As we see flag, misfire. Still not able to put one in. Wide open shot and still cannot get it to go down, but they'll have another offensive opportunity. And flag not able to draw the end one opportunity, but will pick up the foul against Gavin Kinsmill. The Bearcats having a tough go at the rim that time. Luckily, Flag is a high percentage free throw shooter. Kensmill now with two personal fouls. As we see, Derek Tizano set to check in. And I think maybe a little blood on the jersey of Flag. And how about this, Chase? In that first matchup between these two, the Lumberjacks were three for 25 from the three-point line. Probably led to most of those struggles that they had, but here tonight they are six for 11. So what a start they are off to from the three-point line. And you love that as a team. It gives you so much confidence if you're a shooter to keep shooting that shot. And now the Bearcats are gonna have to go back to the locker room maybe to get a, another jersey, but now the officials say the jersey's all good to go. So it will be flag at the line. So two shots coming up for flag. Again, the Bearcats about a 59% free throw shooting team on the season. Flag himself is below that average right at 52%. I resend back what I said earlier about him being a good free throw shooter. And now Tizano will check in for Kinsmill. He's dangerous from the floor, dangerous from the three point line, but tonight could be this momentum and could be the defensive intensity that the Jacks have brought. He's kept Savion Flag on the on the cap space so far. 27-13 as the clock now ticks under eight minutes here in the first half. Kakuri is able to regain control with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Good ball movement. Kakuri from outside. Cannot get it. Hall is able to control it. And Solomon will rise up and put it down and get the end one call. Defense and the offense there. Packeries comes through, pokes that ball out, and it leads to a three-point play opportunity for the Lumberjacks. And we head into break here. Lumberjacks on. I want to see him score. So Calvin Solomon going to the line with the and one opportunity coming up. And I'll tell you what, watching the Lumberjacks so far here in the first half, there is just a completely different, I don't know if it's the crowd here or the rivalry between Sam Houston, but there is a completely different fire that I've seen from this Lumberjack team so far this game. And it has sure been exhilarating watching this crowd get into it. And the Lumberjacks, you said it, Chase. Right now they're shooting a great percentage from the field, but I have to chalk it up to these Lumberjack fans. They really came out tonight to show their support for these Lumberjacks, and right now they are riding that momentum because we know Sam is a good team. They are third place in the conference, but right now the Lumberjacks making work of them, and they don't look to be slowing down. Foul will go against Calvin Solomon. 
And earlier we thought it was blood on the jersey of Savion Flag. It actually ended up to be a, just a tear in his jersey right there on the front, but the officials say it's okay to play with. Clock ticking to seven minutes here in the first half. The lob and the throw down by Kuba, excuse me, Kuba Karwowski. Karwowski that time saying, hey, I may be 7'2", but I can still get up in the air. Great pass there by Savion Flag. Flag and the offensive foul against the Lumberjacks. And Flag may not be able to get it going here early on, or I say early on here in the first half, but he's definitely going to get his teammates involved. And a great find that was to get two more on the board for the Bearcats. And right now the Lumberjacks are at a big size disadvantage underneath the rim. Solomon is guarding Flag, who is a wing on the offense. And Karwowski is underneath the rim with Day Hall. And great disruption there by Solomon to not allow the easy alley-oop. Hall trying to go to work against the 7-2 center, and he's blocked down low. And Karowski will come up with it. Karowski coming up with that offensive rebound. Crowd wanted a foul. Maybe thought he threw an elbow there, but did an aggressive job as Jackson Posey with the steal. He's going to get fouled. Jackson Posey. Good ball movement. Posey from outside. He got that one to go. Jackson Posey from downtown. And he gets his first, the first attempt from the three-point line to fall. It was a beautiful outlook pass by Solomon. As you see that time, Sam Houston answers right back, saving on flag. But Jackson Posey just steps into that shot. And they increase his lead, 32-17. Jackson Posey now one for three from the field. Excuse me, two for four, one for three from the three-point line. Fourth team foul against the Bearcats. Thirty-two seventeen, five twenty here on the first half. Good defense right now from the Bearcats. Five on the shot clock. And Tizno trying to rise up there with the floater and could not get it to go. And count the bucket for Demarcus Lampley. As the, as the Bearcats trying to get back into this one. Yeah, I was just going to say, Chase, beautiful pump fake right there by Lampley. Getting to his spot on the court and able to put it in the rim. Beautiful offense. Jackson Posey cannot answer back. Almost a little lackadaisical on that pass there. Jackson Posey was creeping. And right now, Gavin Kinsmill still on the bench. Two personal fouls. But Coach Keller not one to take any chances with his leading score. Especially with the way Kar Karwowski has been playing down low. Very physical. You see Flag pop for that three. Not able to get it to go down. And it will go in Lumberjack's favor. Flag still trying to get it going. And the good defense of the Lumberjacks has been a presenting factor in that. And as we say, talk about Kinsmill checking into the game. He comes back on the floor here. Just got to be careful with two personal fouls. Now we have what a big substitution. We have Hall. Jackson Posey, Diego Willis, Latrell Jossell, and Gavin Kinsmill on the game for the Lumberjacks. Clock ticking to four minutes here in the first half. 32-19. see the Bearcats here stepping up the defensive intensity all in the face of the Lumberjacks. And not letting anything easy from Latrell and Jossell who has the hot hand. Kinsmill, tough shot. Day Day Hall with the follow. 
Dede Hall not giving up on the play. Coming through like a flash. Able to catch that rebound and put it back in the rim. Great heady play by there, right there by Day Hall. And trying to answer back, and they do, is Jaden Ray as he gets the and one opportunity. That was a strong take right there by Jaden Ray. Able to finish through the contact. And that will lead to a timeout taken on the floor. Lumberjacks lead 34 to 21. Jacks lead by 13 here with 329 remaining here in the first half. Leading the way for the Lumberjacks is Latrell Jossell. He's got nine points on the game. And he's three for three from behind the arc. As we see right now, we see Jaden Ray going to the line, shooting the and one opportunity. Lumberjack sitting at six for 12 from the three-point line. Beautiful start to the afternoon, considering how bad they shot the last two times these, or the last time that these two teams met. Kind of a rare miss from the line as Ray is an 83% free throw shooter. Ray with a good defense against Kakari. Bearcats trying to get back into it where they've trailed all game. Now under 10 on the shot clock. Finding Hall on the inside, the tough finish. Hall with back-to-back -back buckets for the Lumberjacks. A tough finish it was. But Day Hall has seen his test of time throughout this season, him being an undersized post player. But he's been able to get those kind of shots to fall as we see again. SFA comes up with the steal. Cackleries. Fires from downtown, and he gets it. Lumberjacks are on fire right now. 39-21 with 2.30 remaining here in the first half. Good ball movement from the Bearcats to get a bucket of their own. That's Tristan Ipe. Tristan Ipe so far, a quiet night from him. He's got, go ahead. Only his fourth, his fourth point of the night. 39-23, now under two minutes to play here in the first half. Five on the shot clock. Kensville trying to go to work inside, nothing called. Bearcats in transition, and it will be a blocking foul against Diego Willis. Another good take to the rim, though, by Javion May. Getting that pass and transition from Savion Flag, but he goes up to the rim and is challenged by Diego Willis. Willis called for the blocking call at that time. And if you're Sam Houston, these and two free throws are just as important as any that you've taken all game. So Javion May at the line will have two shots coming up. As he missed fires on the first. May usually averages about five to six points a game. And only a 45% free throw shooter as Calvin Solomon, Solomon will check in for Gavin Kinsmill. And if you're Sam Houston and you're down with the way that the Lumberjacks have been shooting the basketball, you want to get those free throws to fall as he gets that second one to fall. But any way you can cut into this lead, it starts right there at the free throw line. With a minute 30 here in the first half, the Lumberjacks looking to extend their lead. Solomon taking it strong to the rack. And he will get fouled, so Solomon will go to the line shooting too. Good, strong take there by Solomon. 
As the first shot is good, Solomon is a 58% free throw shooter on the season. Averages 10 points a game. And knocks them both down is Solomon. And he's got him now, himself now six points. And up to 41 points here in the first half, almost total. And they just total the same amount of points they scored the first time these two teams met up when Sam Houston was able to pull out that win 49 to 41. As the good strong take there by Jaden Ray and blocked down low by Solomon. Talked about a strong take. How about a fast one right there for me? And Solomon will get blocked on the other end. So a game of defense on back to back possessions. Under a minute to play here in the first half. As we see the pull-up jumper is good from Lampley. Lampley again with the shot fake and the mid-range pull-up. Seems to be his game tonight. He gets Giselle on the fake. He's got four points. Timeout. And will, will they be able to get that shot going is the question, Chase. Lumberjacks looking to hold it for the final shot of the first half. Under 10 on the clock. Lumberjacks will make their move now. Got to heave one up. And it will be a foul against the Lumberjacks. So the Bearcats will get it with .8 seconds. Yeah, and Solomon that time kind of sticking his hip out to get some extra room for Posey to get open. That was a great call by the ref there. Had eyes right on it. Tezano will check in for Kinsmill. And Nana will also check in for Jocelle. 0.8 seconds. Bearcats will have to go about three quarter court. Enough time for a quick catch and shoot. And Flad, and the largest lead for the Lumberjacks has been 18. As they sit. Right now the lob trying to get Savion flag going here early. First possession out of the break. They're able to do so off a beautiful backdoor alley-oop pass. Now the Lumberjacks sit on top of an 11-point lead. The Lumberjacks came out hot in the first half, and they'll answer right back with their go-to man in Gavin Kinsmill. Good feed from Diego Willis. Yeah, I was just about to say it, Chase. Nice entry pass there from Willis. Able to find Kinsman for the easy layup. Good defense from Giselle. Outside shot on the way. And still nothing from behind the arc for the Bearcats. And that's been the game plan so far for the Lumberjacks is push, push, push this ball in transition. They've done a keep, great job of it. Keep the Bearcats on their heels. Solomon with a strong take. And Kensmill with the extra opportunity. Jossel wanted to fire so bad there. And now he will. And he remains perfect from behind the arc. Latrell Jossel with another three-pointer. Kicking off the second half the same way he left the first one. Hot from the three-point line. And what a night he's having so far. He leads the Lumberjacks in scoring. He's got 12. Trying to answer back are the Bearcats, and they finally get their first shot from behind the arc to fall. 
and a timely one two as they find themselves down by 13. And I agree with you Chase, a timely three if ever. Right there saw themselves down by 16 but just trying to keep it within grasp because I feel like if those Lumberjacks shoot back up to 18, that might be all she wrote. Good ball movement, Solomon with the jumper. It's nothing but the bottom of the net. SFA not slowing down offensively. Shooting perfect from the field so far in the second half. 48 to 33. Now with 17.30 remaining in the ball game. Good inside take and the extra opportunity is good for the Bearcats. Tristan Ipe that time. Trying to get it inside. Kensville going to work and that'll be a foul down low against Ipe. And a timeout will be taken. Lumberjack still sitting at way above 50% from the field. Only two players so far have shot free throws for the Lumberjacks. It has been Solomon, who's two for three, and Kinsville now one for two. They have still been holding steadfast in this lead since the early minutes in that first half. Good punk fake finding the open man and not able to get it go down and that'll be an offensive, or excuse me, it'll be a foul against Calvin Solomon. Possession error will stay with Sam. And you can hear the crowd not happy about that and that'll bring Dede Hall into the game. So that'll be Solomon's third personal, I believe. But we've seen it again on that possession chase. Wide open three-point opportunity for the Bearcats. And another one that they weren't able to get, able to, able to fall. Good strong take on the inside, able to float it up and in. Is Tristan Ipe. Ipe getting it going a little bit here in the second half, his second bucket. Also taking on the duties of Garden 14 and white for the Lumberjacks. So Ipe has had himself a night as we see Solomon right now posting up. And Solomon not able to get the basket to fall, but he will go to the line to shoot two more. One for two right now as we see Karwowski set to check back in. Yeah, we'll likely take out Ipe. Kar you like the matchup Karwowski on defense when Kinsmill has the ball in the paint because he's going to make life hard to see with him being seven foot two in those long arms. As uh, that one comes up short. So I believe it is Epe that is checking out. Tizano is set to check back in. Kinsmill goes 0 for 2 for that trip, but the Lumberjacks come up with the offensive board. Jossel fires from deep, and he has his first miss of the game. The crowd wanted it. The Bearcats only down by 12. And for a team like this, a 12-point lead. You're the opposing team, as we see right there. Great defense under the rim by Giselle. Trying to move it in transition. They've done it all night. And that'll be it. Also, Latrell Giselle missing his first, having his first miss of the game right before the break. But now the Lumberjacks looking to get it going, and they, oh, it was Kinsmill with the miss there. And Karwowski is going to make any easy layup underneath the rim. Very difficult as we see Kinsmill try to go to the reverse there. So 49-37, and that will be a foul against Jossell, and it will stay back into the hands of the Bearcats. And you can hear the crowd. They were ready for the fast break from Jossell. And as well as we can hear the crowd, I know the refs can hear it too. A lot of pressure 
to be a ref and make a great call, but I think they've been calling this game very equivalent, equal on both sides. And that will be a foul against Day Hall. Trying to battle for position. The Savion flag. Great defense right now from the Lumberjacks. Taking on the inside. Good job by Tizano keeping up with Dante Powers. Good ball movement. As the feed gets down low into the hands of Jocel, but now we're with five on the shot clock. Hall taking on the inside, and he's going to get fouled. You can see Karwowski not happy with that call, but that'll send Hall to the line shooting two shots. Karwowski has picked up a couple quick fouls here since he's checked in. See if Coach Hooten doesn't get Epe back in the game. Hall is a 74% free throw shooter as he misses the first, and Jackson Posey will now check into the game, giving Cacklery's a break. And misses both. Uncharacteristic for Dede Hall. And the lead is going to stay at a 12-point lead for the Lumberjacks. The Lumberjacks have led as many as 18, and Tizano comes up with it with a fast break, and he misses on the slam. And right now the Bearcats trying to make him pay for it. They cannot do so. Big miss right there. There's going to be a turnover by the Lumberjacks. I was just about to say, Chase, that was a big miss right before that turnover there. And Fizzano. I know that can linger with you, but you just gotta get right back into it. Keep playing through it, no matter the good or the bad, the ball can still find the bottom of the net. The lob up to Karowski, he can't finish. And Kinsmill with the strong rebound. Defensive intensity stepping up now for the Lumberjacks. We've seen the Bearcats go a couple possessions of scoring. They've been kind of quiet here lately in the last two minutes. Good find down low. Tizano unable to finish. Lumberjacks trying to go against the 7-2 center. And good defense there by Karlowski. And he didn't even have to jump, just holding his hands up. And a good take by Jossell for the offensive foul against the Bearcats. It was a beautiful job getting back on defense right there by Jossell. If you're Coach Kelly, you love that. A miss on the offensive end, and your guys are sprinting back to get defensive position, and it leads to the ball back with you again. And now Javon Grant checks into the game. Jackson Posey coming out of the backcourt. Kind of stagnant here for both teams the past couple minutes as Pizzino gets it up and in. Beautiful way to get to the rim there by Tizano. He gets that finger row finish. And those were his first points on the night. Maybe on flag, will get fouled by Hall. Flag still held quiet this game. He's got seven points. Way off his average of 19. And now Cackle Reeves will check in for Hall. 
Flagg is three for eight from the field now. So only eight shot opportunities that he's taken. Just a great job by Solomon. A nice take inside by Javon Grant. Clock ticking to 12 minutes here in the second half. As Kinsmill looking to go to work. Good ball movement. Solomon on the inside, no call. And Kinsmill able to finish on the inside. Savion Flagg was looking for a foul underneath the rim there. Kind of left Karwowski in an awkward defensive position there. And they worked a the two-man game. And Kinsmill with another easy layup. And Kinsmill now with 13 points. He leads all scorers for the Lumberjacks. And that foul is going to go against Kinsmill. That'll be his third personal. And you can hear, you can hear the fans not happy about that call. But that will lead to a timeout taken. Lumberjacks lead 53 to 30. Fifty-three, thirty-nine, at the Lumberjacks lead here at William R. Johnson Coliseum. But right now we have Javon Grant going to the line. He'll have two shots coming up. Grant again, about a 62% free throw shooter. Averages about three points a game. As he knocks down the first well above his se season average right now, he's got seven. Chase, I'm a big fan of, or I should say not a big fan of free throw percentages because you know as well as I know, it only matters when it comes downtown to make them. And right there, Grant knocking down both of those free throws is very big as the lead is back to a 12. But the Lumberjacks have just been holding on to this double-digit lead all game. I think it got down to eight at some point early in the first half as it will go out of bounds and it looks like it will stay in favor of the Lumberjacks. Right now the leading scorer for the Bearcats is Epe. He's got eight along with Grant who has eight, but not a single player in double digits. And the Lumberjacks have two in Solomon, or excuse me, in Kinsmill and Jossell. Trying to get it inside. And now the Lumberjacks will just settle for around the perimeter. Ten seconds on the shot clock, 11 minutes on the game clock. Cackleries will fire, and that shot comes up short. And great transition defense from the Lumberjacks to not allow any easy buckets. Another three on the way. Extra opportunities by Flag, and it will be a foul against the Lumberjacks. Right now, the Bearcats have only hit one shot from behind the arc. One for 13 are the Bearcats right now. Shooting 17 for 40 overall from the floor. And still within striking distance, great entry pass by Flag there. Finds Grant underneath the rim. Lead back to 10. But they've been able to kind of hold on, hold on and rot the reins here without making a three-point shot. 53 to 43. Now with half, we're halfway gone here in the second half. Possession by possession if you're the Lumberjacks and if you're the Bearcats. And it will go out of bounds off of the Bearcats. 
And there will be three seconds on the shot clock as Jocelle checks into the ball game, along with Javion May for the Bearcats. Three seconds on the shot clock, so got to act quickly. Kinsmill with the pull-up jumper. That'll be off the mark. And the Bearcats can get it in within single digits. Big possession coming up. Grant with the strong take. And Solomon with the great defensive effort there. Poked away. And the follow jam by Tristan Epay. Tristan Epay just now checking back into the game. And with that, so eight point game with under 10 to play here in the second half. Lumberjacks looking for a bucket. Jocelle, corner three, comes up way short, able to save it, but the Bearcats will come up with it. Yeah, good look from Giselle in the corner there. Surprised to see that one not fall down. And this is a huge offensive possession coming up for the Bearcats. You like to think every one of them is, is Epe coming up with the steal. Leads to offensive points on the end for Sam Houston. Down by six now. Back-to-back -back buckets for Epe. And you have to think, Chase, this is not the time, if you're the Lumberjacks, that you want to see the Bearcats get hot from the three-point lines. We see Kinsville, three-point play opportunity. How about that athletic ability by Kinsville? Up in the air, gets the contact underneath the basket and able to use his length of his arms to go up and finish. Yeah, and he's locked in right now, knows this free throw is big. As now we see Calvin Solomon check back in for Tizano. And you can tell when the guy's locked in because at the beginning of the game, you know, guys were clapping hands and getting excited, but Kinsmill was just focused on making this free throw after a good, strong take at the rim. It was going to come off the front. Kinsmill 0 for his last three from the charity stripe. 55, 47, 830 remaining here in the game. And a nice pull-up jumper, but the Three-point struggles continue for the Bearcats. Lumberjacks push in transition, and a great defensive presence by the Bearcats. It sure was, and here they come in transition. And Solomon right back the other way. It's going to be a traveling call by Calvin Solomon. And the crowd... Obviously not ha happy with that call. Great defense by Kinsmill is not able to come up with it. A good lean and take and flag with the follow. And Savion Flagg has been crashing the offensive boards all night. So that was a big time put back right there to get it to back within six. Flagg now a nine. Lumberjacks would love a bucket here. And a great tip will come up with a steal for the Bearcats. And getting it to fall is Jaron Cook. And just like that, it is a one possession game. And what a fight back Sam Houston has brought to the sawmill. Down 18 early in the second half. They have got it to within three. Some big time shooting, some big time ball movement. And right now, Sam Houston rides that momentum down by three with seven. Now a three-point ball game in favor still of the Lumberjacks. 55 to 52. Lumberjacks had a comfortable 18-point lead at one point. And all of a sudden, 
It is now the ball game we expected it to be. Third, third seed Sam Houston, four seed Lumberjacks in a tight race right now. And Chase, we're on the same brain waves. I was thinking third and fourth place, trying to get up there to the top of those rankings before the end of the season. And right now, Sam Houston has just, just done a great job. You see Posey with the beautiful take getting to the rim there. That was put the Lumberjacks back on top by double digits. And right now, you want any cushion that you can get if you're Coach Keller because Sam Houston is still cold from the three-point line, and right now is when the time for them not to get hot. And a good take inside, but Kinsmill with the better defense drawing the charge against Zipe. Beautiful IQ play right there by Kinsmill, staying out of the restricted zone. And he was able to get that foul call. And Ipe picks up his fourth personal. Another one of those big time possessions coming up right now for the Lumberjacks, creeping up on six minutes left here. Six and a half remaining. Lumberjacks would love to get their cushion back. Good take from Cacklerees, five on the shot clock. Ball is loose and it will be a jump ball, I believe. And it will stay in favor of Lumberjacks, although they only have three seconds on the shot clock. As we see Karwowski check in now for Ipe. And the defense by the Bearcats. Right there on that position. Just made life difficult for Kakaris to dribble the ball. Hall with a pull-up jumper at the buzzer, no good. Karwowski coming up with the big rebound. Bearcats trying to get it back within one possession. And wide open down low, cannot finish. Flag cannot get the follow to go. And it will stay with the Bearcats. Flag has gone from the three-point line all the way inside for extra opportunities this entire game, especially here in the second half. I was about to say, Chase, the, the entire game, his, he has been chasing those offensive rebounds. See that three-point shot is off. And that is going to be a foul on Sam Houston. And almost bear hugged Willis to the ground there was Javion May. And Diego Willis is slow to get up. And Willis saying he hit the back of his head. You can see there almost took him down. And you see May trying to plead his case. I, I don't see much there to plead. So Willis at the line, one and one coming up. Cannot connect on the first, and it will go in favor of the Lumberjacks as the Bearcats cannot control it. Just not paying too much attention right there were the Bearcats when that ball came off the rim. And SFA now with the chance to push this lead to seven. shot clock. Lumberjacks trying to get a basket on the inside and that'll be a foul from Karowski. Pensmill able to get position. And that's his third personal. And on the entry pass that Tom Karowski just grabbing Kinsmill around the waist there trying to get himself in better position but that's going to be a foul call every time. Great odds by the ref. So Kinsmill shooting the one and one. And Kensmill able to break a little bit of a drought for himself. Went 0 for 3, able to knock that one in. Now 2 for 6. Like
like I said, Chase, not a fan of free throw percentages, but can you make it when the time comes to it? As Kinsman goes one for one. One for two. One for two. Sorry about that. It's all good. He's got 14 points now. With 5.30 remaining here in the second half. And it will be tipped out of bounds. It will stay in favor of the Bearcats. Bearcats still trying to get flag going. As he sits at nine points, two Bearcats in double digits with Ipe at 12, along with Grant at 10. As the shot is up and no good, long rebound. And they're gonna say it'll go in favor of the Bearcats. And it may have been last touched by Kinsmill. And as we've seen that three-point shot go up and not in by Jaron Cook, that is about the fourth one here lately in the second half that they've had open looks but just not able to knock it down. And those three-point ghosts continue for the Bearcats here. 0 for 8 in the first half, 2 for 9 in the second half of the Bearcats from behind the arc. Good take on the inside. Just not able to finish. Big rebound right there by Solomon. And I'll tell you what, a little bit trans, a uh, little bit of a translation from first half to second half. It seems like in the first half the Lumberjacks were more like go, go, go. Here in the second half, it seems like they're setting up a little bit more. I'm with you on that, Chase. But nonetheless, they find Pins Mill on the inside. Up by eight now. If you're the Bearcats, you want to put the ball in the rim right here and keep this lead to within six. That way, when it comes down to crunch time, you're able to stay within striking zone. And a good feed on the inside as Javion May is able to finish with contact. As Pensmill and Willis discussing a few things. but it will send May to the line, trying to make it a five-point ball game. This is pressure right here. 45% free throw shooter. And cannot connect with this lone free throw. They needed that shot more than ever. Every point counts as time ticks down to four minutes remaining here in the second half. Feed inside to Kinsmill, wide open, and able to lay it up and in. Good find by David Cackleries. Cackleries playing quarterback on that position. Kinsmill now with 16. Hitting his season average on the night. And that'll be a <laughs> as he knocks down the front end of one and one. Over in Huntsville, Lady Jacks getting the victory over there. Lumberjacks looking to do the same as Grant knocks in both. And the Lady Jacks stay undefeated in WAC conference play. Full court pressure here from the Bearcats. As that pass will be tipped out of bounds, it will stay in favor of the Lumberjacks. Interesting stat. Sam Houston, 36 points in the paint tonight. SFA only 28. Well, I mean, well, Bearcats have had to find a way to score offensively with their given their struggles from outside. Sixty-two fifty-six. Under ten on the shot clock. Cacklerees from downtown cannot get it. And a fight for the board and flag is able to come up with it. And with three minutes left, if you're saving on flag, you want to call for the ball. You see, setting up offense right now is the Bearcats. Finds Ipe. And he's not able to finish. But the follow is good by JV on May. JV on May again, right place, right time there. 
Down by four, big time bucket right there by the Bearcats. Four-point game, trying to feed inside to Solomon. Solomon double-teamed, and it will be a jump ball. But Sam closing in, <clears throat> closing in on the gap. Good look on the Bearcats. And this is the matchup that you want. Outside shot on the way, and that's going to be a foul from Cackleries. So three free throws coming up for the Bearcats. And that will be Demarcus Lampley going to the line. Lampley, second highest averaging scorer for the Bearcats, averages about 11 a game, is about a 56% free throw shooter. He has seven on the night so far. Big time free throws as he connects with the first. And the first one of those free throws is always the hardest one. You want to make sure you get your rhythm down. He knows as well as we do, this is our, these are big free throws. It is a one possession game. And now he can cut it down to one. Lampley right now, this is what you call clutch shooting. It doesn't always come from a three-point line or a mid-range, but right there at the free throw line. And misses on the final. So it remains a two-point game with under two minutes to play. Everybody hang on. The game is coming down to a wire as the Lumberjacks. Trying to get a little bit of cushion here as Jackson Posey rises up and comes up with the big basket. Jackson Posey coming in big for the Lumberjacks. And that is his shot, that mid-range pull. -up. And how about this for the Lumberjacks? Tezano into the game right now. Mentioned way early in the broadcast, he has done a great job these last few games of making himself a threat on the offensive and defensive end. And Coach Keller has him in here in this closing lineup. 10 on the shot clock, flag on the inside, able to get it to go down. In clutch time, flag always get it into the hands of your leading or best scorer. And what a time for flag to have his name called. Because that was a big two points right there. One minute to play here at William R. Johnson Coliseum. You see Jackson Posey trying to get to that mid-range. Great and defense back there by Ipe. And they're going to say it'll go out of bounds off of the Bearcat or off of the Lumberjacks. On the way, no good, but the Lumberjacks get the offensive board. And the foul by the Bearcats. How about that? The offensive board by the Lumberjacks. Coming up big is Jocelle. And he'll be shooting too. Tipping it out that time was Day Hall. Getting his, able to get a ball on the hand, get a hand on the ball there and tip it out to Jocelle. And knocks in the front end of two. So now a three point game. He makes this one. He can extend it to a two possession game. And nonetheless, Chase, just as a pure basketball fan, what a game this has been here tonight. Third and fourth place teams in the WAC Conference just battling it out. And Jocelyn with some clutch free throws. You talked about it all night. Free throw percentage doesn't matter whenever you can come up big in clutch time. And two big free throws right there by Jocelyn. Under 40 seconds. Grant on the outside, trying to get inside to flag, and he can't finish. 25 seconds on the clock, three is good from the Bearcats, Ipe. Big shot right there by Ipe. And it was rebounds. 
And they get it in the hands of Jossell. Jossell is fouled. And he'll go to the line shooting two more. Big time free throws coming up for Jossell. Just found himself in this position about 45 seconds ago. And here he is at the and here he is again at the free throw line. Trying to make this a three-point game. And how about the Bearcats? Struggling from behind the arc. And coming up with a three when they need it the most. And he misses the front end of two. Jossell, a 91% free throw shooter on the season. And he knocks in the second, so two point game. No shot clock. And 23 and a half seconds remaining. Derek Tizano will check in for defense. Ron Grant really pushing the pace right here. 15 deep three point attempt on the way, no good. And Flag doing what he's done all night with the extra opportunity under 10. Jackson Posey. And let's see what the Lumberjacks have drawn up. Inside, Kinsmill layup no good. And Jackson Posey will throw it up, and he gets fouled. Jackson Posey will be going to the line, shooting three. Jackson Posey realizing there was contact and threw it up. Talk about IQ right there by Jackson Posey. Knows the situation, saw how fast Sam Houston was closing out on him. And he could ice the game right here with 1.8 seconds left on the clock. You would like Jackson Posey to make all three of these because Bearcats, as he misses the front end. Bearcats will have to get a heave off unless they get a deep entry pass. No timeouts left for either team. Two more shots coming up for Jackson Posey. Makes the second, so gives the Lumberjacks the lead. Bearcats down by one. As we see Tizano check in for Jossell. What you don't want to do if you're the Lumberjacks is foul the Bearcats on the long court heave. And he makes the second, so two point game. Trying to get all the way back are the Bearcats. Deep pass, tipped by Kinsmill, and that will seal the deal at the buzzer. 